as far as the actual code, um, there'll, there'll actually be kind of one base thing. I'm doing all the hardware design in CalCAD or KeyCAD or however you would like to pronounce it. Um, most of the STM8, um, and I'm considering this, you know, uh, all of these modules that are outside of the central um, control system. And in 485, you have to have a master. So everything that's actually in slave mode on 485 is more than likely going to be this STM8. So basically, in kit. Uh, KiCad, I have uh, basically formed my sheets to where this particular schematic, they're hierarchical, they're all the same. Um, so I've got you know a two output version and a three output version of the board that I want to produce. Um, and they both use the exact same schematic for the microcontroller. Uh, if you haven't used STM8 yet, these are really inexpensive. I think these I picked these up for maybe 70 cent a piece, um, so they're they're very inexpensive, very easy to write code for, really easy to debug. Uh, it does use the uh, the SWIM connection, uh, which is you know a four pin programming header. Um, it's really easy to do. Um, and if you've watched any of my past videos, I think I have a board here somewhere, just to kind of give you uh, an idea. Oh, it's right in front of me. Um, I've done a lot of designs. This is a uh, this is the STM32. Um, probably my go-to processor as far as doing anything intensive. Um, this more than likely is what's going to be at the central. If I decide to build a big network of these input outputs, uh, this 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 will be the design. Um, I've done previous designs. This is the uh, This is the RF board. Um, you know, tons of power rails. We've got an analog device, this RF chip here. And at the heart of it, a little STM. I think that's like a 405. Um, but the, you know, the 4 series um, is generally what I use. And I've got a lot of development boards for that. Um, believe it or not, there's a lot less to it than there is the, uh, the actual outer power handling things. Um, you know, you a lot of things you don't have to worry about you know, thermal uh, load. Uh, basically just lay out a board and make sure everything's connected and it's pretty much going to work. Um, these power boards that are actually, you know, switching 15, 30 amps, um, you really have to pay attention to, um, to the actual, you know, thermal load and, and where the conductors are at and that, that, that kind of thing. You also have to worry about, you know, getting them in an enclosure where uh, you're not going to have a dead short. Um, it's going to be more, probably more exposed the elements. I do plan on putting this right up front uh, where the existing relays are at, at the terminal block. Because ideally what I would want to do, um, you know, my razor's not super messy right now as far as wiring, but it could be a way better. Um, you know, you've got basically two relay blocks that are laid there, four wires coming out of each one of those, and then going up and try to tie to a terminal block. Well, ideally, once I do this, I'll have a ground, a hot coming off that terminal block to this, and then those wires will go directly to the, uh, the two things I want to control. There won't be any other uh, additional wiring or crazy connectors. Uh, more than likely, uh, I'll use a Deutsch connector for the uh, 485 if I decide to do that, using regular shielded 485 wire with a boot. Uh, that way it would be all waterproof, but all the actual connections, um, I plan on actually using, you know, heat shrink crimps. Uh, they're permanent. Um, I typically, now that uh, I have a hydraulic crimper, uh, I typically don't, you know, try to solder and heat shrink and do all that stuff. Because the actual, the heat shrink crimps, if you hydraulically uh, crimp those, the wire's never coming out of that. Uh, and also, the, if you get the ones that actually have the, uh, the glue in them, once they seal up, I mean, they're, they're good forever. Um, so that is currently the plan. And if I, when I do the central module, if I, just, if I start getting really fancy and start doing tail lights and things like that, 
the razors right now they have you know basically your park light and your brake light um, but a lot of people add like turn signals and things like that um, so there's not a huge wire load back there right now but if you added turn lights and things like that that multiplexing at the rear of the razor then makes a lot more sense you basically run one one set of power wires back there bust that up to this front controller and you won't end up having to have separate wires for every single function turn left, turn right, park lot, brake lot. You can also do neat things, uh, you know, like uh, strobe lights, uh, do patterns. Um, the neatest thing that I want to do, which is what I had on the 800, is, you know, the rock lights. I would really like those to, basically, if I have lighting on, um, so there's some degree of darkness there, I'd really, those rock lights kind of automatically turn on. Uh, I don't like rock lights once I get out of the rocks and I start going you know, faster down a gravel road or something like that. I kind of want those to turn off. Uh, as a convenience feature, I'd like that just to kind of go out uh, on its own. And then when I slow down again and it's dark, you know, they turn back on. And I know a lot of people you know, have whip lights that they turn on and off. You, know, you could uh, very easily uh, connect up a light sensor or a photo cell or something of that nature and automatically turn on and off the lights if you wanted to. Uh, and that's the beauty of multiplexing. You can actually add whatever kind of sensor type stuff that you want, inputs that you want, and do anything you want to with the outputs. Um, so it, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get started putting these together. Um, I'll probably use this same 405 for the central unit. Uh, the neat thing about it is it, it actually has multiple UARTs I'll probably only do one bus, but generally I put two, uh, just because it, you know if you if you uh, really get in a bind uh, on cabling or something like that, the limit on 485 typically is 32 devices, so you could have 32 nodes uh, on the bus. But if you have two UARTs and two 485 buses, that you know you double it. Um, another thing that I would want the 405 for is the CAN interface that I've already written. For the razor, uh, you know, I want to intercept those CAN messages that reverse, you know, my speed uh, to help me control uh, the things that I want to control. But if you have any questions or any interest in this project, please let me know. Um, I'll, uh, like I said, it'll, it'll, this will be multiple videos. Uh, it's going to take, you know, it may take four months. But I just kind of wanted to show you kind of how. Uh, at least I, you know, start developing projects or products that are going to end up uh, with somebody using it. And this is kind of how I started. Um, I have a lot of experience already with these development boards. Uh, for the STM-8, uh, these are really inexpensive. I always just buy one and prototype up. Uh, they give you a little proto area here. Um, I generally do try to buy, especially if it's something new. Um, I have not used uh, this particular high side driver from ST and they had a really inexpensive development board I actually got two so I can actually prototype at least the output section for all this uh, on the inputs um, I do plan on actually supporting uh, you know normal 12 volt signaling and that'll be uh, opto isolated uh, so that you can use your standard rocker switches and that kind of thing if you want uh, which is what I'm going to be doing initially to actually turn on and off the uh, the devices so for typical application either a you haven't installed a winch yet or you haven't installed a light bar yet you could do this pop on two wires onto your uh, existing bus and your accessory 12 volt that's actually up on your terminal and basically just crimp wires um, you know you basically have two hot wires that came out uh, to go to your light and your winch um, no no other relay stuff or anything like that um, and you wouldn't actually be sending high current 12 volt all the way up to the dash or to the switch panel. Um, it will basically be going direct and you'll be sending really simple signaling uh, back and forth. I know a lot of folks that don't end up doing the relay thing. Uh, they just basically wire it straight through the switch. Uh, the only issue with that is, is you're really creating a lot longer route uh, for the power wiring. Um, there's really no need for it to go up there. I kind of understand it if you only have one accessory. Um, but when you get up to like, you know, rock lots, 
uh, reverse lights, a light bar, and uh, a winch. You're talking about a huge gob of wires that you're trying to get on a hot terminal on a ground terminal, and it just it just becomes unmanageable. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment. Um, I'll try to, you know, as soon as stuff comes in, or I'll, or I'll do a stage of this. Probably the next video, maybe some software development stuff. Um, I, bet, well, I already have a project started for this STM8, uh, and it, it already runs. Uh, but I'll probably try to get this wired up and actually put it under load and actually you know kind of simulate here on the bench first uh, with all the code running on it and as close as I can get it um, the only exception may be the inputs may end up being 5 volt rather than 12 for the prototype uh, because I will actually need that uh, opto isolation which you know that's really easy to do so I'm not really interested in Trying to, trying to lay that out, out here on the bench until I get an actual prototype board. But anyway, thanks for watching.